skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformations. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Welcome, everybody, to Life Transformation Radio. I'm your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Performance Enhancement Expert, and Author, Sean Douglas. I want to welcome everybody who is listening from around the world. This show is heard in over 46 countries, such as the U.S., India, Canada, France, Australia, Panama, Belgium. So I really thank you guys so much for listening, and I want to welcome you to the show. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformations. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing. We highlight the transformational moments that have changed our lives and how we're using these to help transform others and elevate their lives as well. Now you can listen to us every Wednesday and on the first and third Fridays, at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. However, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I host special pop-up episodes for book launches, product launches, events that are going on. So if you know someone or you listening have a book launch or product launch coming up, I'd love to have you on the show. You can also join our Facebook community, Life Transformation Radio Community. Join us on Facebook, interact with the guests, ask them questions. They're all in the community. You can also subscribe to wherever it is that you're listening right now, whether it be on iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, TuneIn, the Google Play Music app, wherever you are listening, please, please subscribe to the show. On the show are impactful and amazing guests that are impacting everyone around them, and my guest today does exactly that. Please help me welcome to the show, Tyler Cerny. What is up, my friend? What's going on, Sean? Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Dude, I'm super pumped to have you on the show, man. Like, you are as real as it gets, man. You are the real deal, man. So pumped to have someone of your stature, of your caliber on the show. Let's do it, man. I'm ready. Heck yeah, man. So for the listeners, this is a live broadcast. So you can call into the show if you have questions for myself or Tyler at 657 383 one one zero nine. Again, the number is six five seven three eight three one one zero nine. And the title of the show is the High Ticket Closer, Tyler Cerny. He is the High Ticket Closer, certified by the King of High Ticket Sales, Dan Lok. Tyler uh, only partners with six figure marketing consultants, six figure business coaches, six figure agency owners, six figure fitness coaches, and two comma club members to increase their close ratio, close ratio on inbound leads for their high ticket offer. As a high ticket closer, Tyler gets the job done by turning inbound leads into paying customers with one call rather than selling features of or selling features and benefits like a salesperson would, Tyler capitalizes on the prospect's current situation, desired outcome, and stress pain points to motivate the prospect to invest over the phone today. Tyler's unique style of closing mixed with his professionalism and finesse leads to an, to an effective partnership and allowing you to easily scale your business. Partnering with Tyler solves these problems burning through inbound leads by giving them to salespeople, close ratios less than 20%, on the verge of burning out closing leads yourself. So you can connect with him on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. All of the links are right there on the page that you're looking at. It is all there in the show notes. So, dude, that is massive what you do, man. Six-figure people that you work with, comma club, like, come on, man. You're crushing it. 
Yeah, and uh, this was something I stumbled upon by finding my mentor, Dan Locke. Um, a lot of the stuff that I, a lot of the skills and expertise that I've had and, and the successes that I've had was due to finding my mentor and uh, following what he does and learning from him. Amazing. So here's what I want to ask you, man. The first question I always ask to the guest is why? Why a high ticket closer? Why do you do what you do? Yeah, so um, I, I, it's been over a year since I've been a full-time entrepreneur, and I, I've tried a lot of different things. I've gone down the rabbit hole of internet marketing. I've invested over $10,000 in internet marketing oh, wow. courses. So I, I know a lot of different things that are out there, and I, I've tried a lot of different things. And um, when I first started, I just didn't have the – my mindset wasn't right. Um, the, the courses that I invested in, people were getting results. Um, there was a lot of testimonials. People were, people were making a lot of money. But for whatever reason, I didn't. And um, I was making okay money, and this allowed me to travel, and this is – the, the, my passion of my why is, you know, I've always been curious. I've always liked to learn new things and just ex uh, learn more about different experiences, learn more about different cultures, just learn more and just have that, my curiosity. So um, I, my why was I, I had this curiosity inside me and I wanted to learn more and just travel the world. So that was basically my why at one point. And the reason why I wanted to travel was because I wanted to feel free. And this is why I wanted, I invested in courses like this because I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to um, live my own lifestyle. I, I wanted to live, I wanted to have a lifestyle and form my business around my lifestyle. So my why at that time was to, you know, um, support that lifestyle and travel and, you know, do anything that allowed me to do that. But then I realized that, it's, it's much deeper than that. It's much, it, it, those, those reasons were selfish reasons and those reasons were for to make more money and just to support a lifestyle that I, I wanted to live. And since then, since I made this transition, I, I was at a point where I was making money, I was traveling the world, but I was spending 10 to 12 hours behind a computer. Um, and I got low key depressed because I love connecting wow. with people and networking right. and engaging and speaking with people. This is what I really like doing. And it goes back to my why. It's because I like learning about other people. I'm just, my curiosity to learn has always been my main motivator and driver. And I love learning more about different people because I know they're going to be able to share me a perspective that I didn't have if I didn't work, if I weren't to meet them. Um, so that's why I love networking. And once I came across Dan Locke, and he, he's been my mentor for the last four months now, and he has transformed my life to really, you know, understand what my why was, right? And it, people say, you know, why they do things. They say, oh, I wanted to live a life, like uh, I wanted to, I wanted to live abroad. That's my why. That's why I do everything I do. Okay. But really, everything comes down to the feeling that they feel. People want that People don't want that new car. They want that feeling that it takes that, or that they will have when they get that new car. And for me, I wanted that, that feeling of what it was like to be a six-figure business owner traveling the world. And then once I realized that I could live, that I could feel that today, then I, things started, you know, I started to operate differently. I started to change how I operated how, in my business, I started to have less scarcity in my life. And I started to um, connect with people that had, that I perceived had the same value as I did. And since then awesome. it's been amazing. Um, and one of my, another, one of my wives is for my, for my mom and my, my parents, they, they've really supported me through college. So I want to pay off my debt, hundred percent of my college debt support um, and then also pay off all their debt and then ultimately buy them a house in Isla on an Isla of Mujeres in Mexico. That's another reason. That's one of my motivators of why I get up. I love it, man. Um, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I always said, man, like if I win the lottery, like, you know, like 
my whole family's going to be debt free. You know, I mean, my sisters, mom, aunts and uncles, um, if I could hook up my grandparents, you know, whatever, like I want to hook up friends and family, you know, and like everybody's going to be debt free. Everybody's going to have like some money in the bank. Like everybody's going to have like, you know, just a great life. You know what I mean? Like I want to share it out. So yeah, that's a huge motivator, man, for me too. Uh, so I resonate huge, man. I connect with your why. Cause that's kind of big for me too. You know, I grew up scarce, grew up broke, grew up in Detroit. So, you know, I didn't have, and when I started building businesses and started getting money, I'm like, this feels amazing. <laughs> right. Like I don't want to go back to, you know, spam sandwiches and chef Boyardee, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. huge, man. Thank you for sharing your why. Thank you for that. So I believe that everybody goes through a transformation. Everybody doesn't, you know, like Tony Robbins did not come out of the womb, you know, speaking at Madison Square Garden, you know, Zig Ziglar, you didn't just be born a six-figure closer. You're at two years old, you weren't closing deals, right? So what was that transformation process like? How did, like, who were you before and how are you different now? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so to be clear, I'm not a six, I'm not a six-figure closer yet. That is the goal, um, but I do sure. partner with people that uh, at that at that stature. Um, huh? But what really changed for me was the mindset of what mm. it and and the stuff that I sh- I'm sharing today is stuff that I've learned from my mentor. So this was you know one of the biggest things that, you know of what I recommend people doing is get a mentor that you can truly resonate with. And yep. um, for me, what changed was the mindset of when you commit to something, you do. When you say you're going to commit to something, you do whatever you need to do to achieve that result, right? And that that in itself is so powerful when you really think about it. Is that whatever whatever happens, this is what I'm committing to. No, you're you're not giving any excuses. You don't have any opinions. Yep. You do whatever it takes to achieve, achieve that result. And then what comes along with that is that the mindset of, you know if it's something very big to you at the time, you have to believe that you can achieve it. And then you also have to have this level of confidence that no matter what happens, that I'm going to achieve it, that it's going to get done. And that's what it's all about. With these courses online, you know, people will say, Oh, they, uh, I invested all this money in the courses that, uh, you know, they scammed me. Right. You hear it all the time. Um, It's like, no, man, you, you, you didn't, the, the process works. These, this pro, other people are making money off it, right? People are using the right. same business model, the same systems that these courses are teaching, but you're not making money. That means you need to change. And, and, and for some people, that's a tough pill to swallow. And for me, mm-hmm. once I made that realization, once someone told me that up front in a very straight and direct way, then things started to change. It's like, okay, wow. You know, th- this is what I want to do. I'm committing it to it. And even though it might take a while, I'm going to enjoy the process and um, I'm going to relax because I know I'm going to get there because I'm not going to stop until that I get the result that I want. Boom. Oh, that's huge. So what was that moment? Do you remember? What was that moment that you said, like, enough is enough. I've got to change my life or – I'm just going to, I'm going to take no excuses. I'm going to take no prisoners. Like I'm going to do, I'm going to make this like what, like what was that moment where you actually transformed your mindset into how you think today? Yeah, that's a really good question because what goes along with mindset is the self image, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. we think about ourselves of who we are, you know, that's going to, result into our surroundings and how we operate on a day-to-day basis. So when I was traveling, I, I, there was a huge turning point for me. And um, I I, I viewed myself as a backpacker, right? I I viewed myself as a young backpacker who Mm -hmm. just wanted to travel, make money and just, you know, and and, and as a backpacker, you know, you're not really that, you're not really reliable in business, right? You're you're just, you know, traveling world as almost as like a free spirit. And, and I remember I was in, uh, uh, it was Cambodia. I was in Cambodia and, uh, there was this event. I, 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 I was in this class with my mentor and he said that 
there was this huge opportunity on like a Monday or Tuesday. And I remember it was like a Friday. And, it, and he said that like, you know, we're going to have a live call. And I wanted to make such a good first impression to my mentor that, you know, I wanted to have a suit, everything lined up. And this was like on a Tuesday. And I, I remember I was like sitting poolside and like at this hostel on Friday. And I said, you know what? I need to get to Vietnam. I need to get a custom suit made on Saturday just so I can be prepared for this call. And mm-hmm. it was actually really funny because when I get to the call and I, and I, all this stuff happens, like if you read all this stuff online, you have to get a visa for, for Vietnam before 12 o'clock Monday through Friday. This, I, I made this realization oh, at 3 p.m. Man. on Friday. And this guy, I told this guy, the one of the guys, I was like, can I get to Vietnam? Can you get me a visa? And he's like, oh, I don't know. But this guy, his name was uh, Skip. Look, his name was Skip. And Skip <laughs> came through, man. It was like 3, he came back at like 6 p.m. I got on an over on Friday night and then oh my gosh. Uh, to Vietnam and because that was like the, the, the first thing available. Got to it. And then I got, I, I ended up making it work, right? But then I realized, like, I got my suit and all this stuff, and I was, you know, nothing huge happened, right? It's not like I had a one-on-one right. conversation with them. It's not like I had, like, a job offer that, you know, that changed my life. But it, it just showed me, like, by me making that decision and me showing up in a suit to this live class online yeah. showed me what it takes to operate at a different level, right? Mm-hmm. You know? I, you know, oh, yeah, I'm man. in a suit. I'm 100% dialed in. I know what it takes now to operate at a high level, to work with people who also operate at a high level. So for me, that changing point was that mindset of who am I, right? Mm-hmm. And now my identity is the a high ticket closer that partners with influencers and industry thought leaders to close their offers in one phone call, right? There you go. And everything, everything that I do, it's in my day-to-day action. I was like, you know, anytime I have doubt, I was like, okay, is this what a high ticket closer would do? Right. And that's kind right. of like my inter- internal GPS now. I love that. The internal GPS. Dude, that's huge, man. Huge. So what, what I got out of that, man, was that, you know, you dressed for success. You believed in it. You said, this is what, this is what I'm doing. Like you're fully dialed in, 100% committed. You know, you're not doing, you don't just, you don't, you don't just kind of want it. Like, you, like you want it. Like, this is what you're doing. Like, this is it. This is your identity. Like you said, this is, this is your identity, you know? And so I, I love the fact that you put on a suit just for, just for like a call. Like that is, that is cool, man. Most people wouldn't even do that. They would probably just be wearing whatever they were wearing, you know? So talk about what it takes, okay, besides the mindset, you know, like what does it take or what is the process that someone goes through to, to be a high ticket closer? So if I'm like, if I'm a mentor and I'm like, man, I really want to work with like guys like Tony Robbins and Les Brown or, or if I got, you know, if I got businesses that have X and X product and like I need to close them on either my coaching or products that I have, whatever, like. Like, what does it take to close those high ticket offers? Yeah, so there's a lot of different strategies and techniques to cl- close the offers, but I think what you're asking is how can I connect with the Tony Robbins and then ultimately work with them to close their deals, right? Yeah, I mean, like if I'm if I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, Tyler's crushing it, dude. He's like deal after deal after deal. Like if I'm looking at, let's say I'm, I'm sitting, at, you know, brand new at a car dealership. You know, this guy's just like selling cars, selling cars, selling cars. I'm like, holy crap, like, what is he doing? Like, man, this guy's like crushing it. So I, I see what you're doing, you know what I mean? And I see that, like, where are you calling from right now? Tell everybody where you're calling from right now. Uh, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. <laughs> calling from Vietnam, man. What time is it over there? 4.49 a.m. 4.49 a.m. Tyler is up, awake on a freaking podcast. He's on a radio show all the way from Vietnam at 4:49. I don't know what wearing everybody suit, here in a suit as well. A suit. <laughs> right. But like think about that for a second. Really digest that. 4:49 a.m. You know, 
uh, on a Thursday morning. So it's Friday here, you know, 5.49 p.m., North Carolina. Tyler is awake at 4.30 a.m. in Vietnam, ready for the show, dialed in and focused. Sometimes my mentees that I'm mentoring, like speakers and entrepreneurs, stuff, I can't get them to give me an email back. You know, like I can't get them to, to answer the phone. You know, and here you are, man, showing up, showing out. And, and so, I, so that's what I'm like, what does it take? Is it, is it discipline? Is it like, what does it take to be a high ticket closer? Yeah. So there is this intensive course that I went with, I went through with my mentor, Dan Lack, where he teaches you the, the strategies and techniques. And if people want to learn more about that, you know, there will be a link mm-hmm. that they can access. Um, sure. But it, 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 if I want to sum it all up, so you get this mindset, right? You, you know, okay, if I, I am a high ticket closer, I believe it. Okay. Now, what are some strategies and techniques that I can use? Well, they just keep it very simple is that people, you know, when you go to a car dealership, uh, you know, people are selling you the features and benefits, you know, Hey, do you want, you know, do you want this red one? Do you want the black one? Like what model do you like? Uh, and, and basically you're selling it on price. Right. And, and there's different things yeah. where the, the, the motivation for the prospect to buy isn't that high. Right. And for it to be high, there need, you need to, you need to figure out like, why did they come to that car dealership? Right. Yep. You need to ask him questions like, you know, you know, why are you here? You know, are you looking, are you, are you trying to look for a car? Like there's a reason why they showed up, find out that reason. Right. Mm-hmm. Is it, do you want to buy it for your wife? Do you want to buy a new car? Are you, um, because you're sick of the car you're driving now? Is it just, are you going in there just to do some, uh, um, vision, positive affirmations just to look at your dream car? Can you kind of talk, like figure out what that is and then, um, like figure out what their pain points are, figure out what yep. their current situation is. And then why do they want to buy it? Cause most, you know, and this was what I was referring to earlier. People want to buy it based off how they, they feel. Right. Yep. By the emotions. So it's like really, it's so simple too. It's like actually listening to what the, the prospect or what the person wants and true and, and, and not sounding salesy because when you, yeah. when you, a salesperson is like, oh, like, like Dan, Dan, like my mentor, he always asks, like, what's the first word that comes to your mind when you think of a salesperson? Sales. Sleep. Yeah, like sleazy. Uh, yeah. Know, you know, like a slime, slimy, like, you know, and then right. it's like, you know, and, and he, he also says something like, you know, what, what if your kid came to you and said, I want to be a salesperson when I grow up? Ugh. Yeah, it's like, oh my, like, no, dude, like, what are you doing, right? Yeah, right? Because don't call all they, of your relatives. <laughs> like, most yeah. of the marketers are always like, call your family, call your friends, call, your, yeah, go ahead and burn your bridges. <laughs> Real good idea. Yeah. Not so much. So, so Dan taught me that, you know, sales isn't, it, 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 they've been doing it all wrong, man. You, oh, yeah. To truly mo- motivate people to, to, you know, pay, when I, like, pay for a high ticket offer something that's five thousand dollars or more it's like you have to create a change within that person they have to basically yep. sell themselves so once you identify their pain point of you know they're coming to you to help them solve a problem they want something happen and then it's like okay once you found that pain point you know what do you want to do what's your dream where's your goal where's that desired situation then once you have your their desired situation then you kind of, you bridge the gap and you say, well, why haven't you gotten there on your own? And then they're like, Oh, I don't know. Uh, You know, they, they give you whatever reason it may be. And then it's like, okay, well, I had the solution to get you there. Yep. And and then at the end, and then if you set it up like that, they're not worried about, you know, price at all. It's like, how committed are you? So that's why like people will pay like $10,000 for like, relationship coaching right it's just like they're on the verge to lose their marriage and then it's like their desired situation right. is like i want to rekindle that flame with my wife that i had when i first met her well it's like well how much do you value that and then the guy will be like i'll do anything for that you know right like just, just what's your price man just that just solve my problem so then when you're coming from that and 
And this is assuming that you have an awesome product, an awesome offer that you right. truly do get transformational results, right? So you can come from that position. So but when you do, when you come from that standpoint, it's just like, you know, you're a doctor, you have the solution, you know, the doctor, mm-hmm. you, they come in and it's like, well, this is what you need. And this is, this is what you, you know, and they give it to you. They're not like, you know, they're not like super excited. They're like, Hey, hey what's going on? Like, um, would you like this? Would you want to get a buy one, get one free antidote? You know, it's like, All right. no, it's not like that. You know, it, it, they're calm and they, they, they figure out your pain points. They ask you questions, learn about where you're at, and then they provide a solution to your problem. Exactly. I like how you said that, you know, you're selling the desired result, the desired life. You know what I mean? Like, like the end game, like that's what you're selling. I, when I went in to sell my truck, <laughs> this is so stupid. When I went in to, to, to trade in my truck, I wanted to, I had a, uh, it was 2014 and I had a 2004 GMC Sierra and it just had like 110,000 miles on it. Super clean, super nice truck. And I was looking to get a Tundra. The guy tells me like, not even asking me any questions. He's like, Oh, you like the Tundras? He's like, yeah, you should get that truck. I was like, well, I just kind of want to look at it. He's like, man, that thing towed the space shuttle. You need that truck. I was like, really, dude? Really? That's your sales pitch? I just walked out. I'm like, whatever, dude. I'll go somewhere else. So the manager calls me up, and I was like, your dude told me I should buy the truck because it towed the space shuttle because of a freaking commercial. He didn't try to sell me on why I need it because my family, we go to the beach, I'm going to tow a boat, like nothing. Like, he didn't ask me why I wanted the truck. He just said, oh, yeah, you want that truck? Yeah, man, towed the space shuttle. So... Like three days later, I'm in there talking to the manager and the manager sold me and I knew what I wanted, but I was like, what in the, like, we all know those terrible, terrible salespeople. So you hit on a couple things earlier. People buy on three things. You already mentioned identity and emotions. And really you mentioned all three They buy on needs, identity, emotion, and needs. So if you can hit on those three things, like, why do you want this? You know, um, People don't go into dealerships unless they want a car. People don't go into, into Walmart unless they're actually buying things, looking for things, you know, whatever. So you got to think of why they're there. So prospecting goes a long way. But I really feel, and, and you hit this right on the head, man, selling that, that, that life, selling that result. Because one of the businesses that I built was I was buying storage units at auction. And Can you hear me? Tyler. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, why do people buy on emotions, needs, um, uh, you know, emotions, needs, and identity? Like, why is that why people buy? And this is such an interesting concept. And I, and, and, and I, like, I, like I've been saying throughout this whole, sh- whole show, Dan Locke is the man that has taught me all the knowledge that I have. So, the stuff that I'm saying is what he has taught me. And it's really, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, what he says, it's, it's they buy a better version of themselves. Yes. Yes. There it is. You're buying the results. So I was always told in sales, and I've never taken a sales course. Like, I've just listened to people like you, you know, and you listen to people like Dan. And so I'm learning from you, from Dan. You see what I'm saying? I'm learning from guys like Grant Cardone, you know, Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson, whatever. Everybody says the same stuff. You talk about the what and you sell the how. What can you sell the hell? I don't care. Nobody is going to a car dealership to buy Chevy or Ford or anybody because they have great core values. <laughs> like nobody's like you know what I'm saying? Nobody's going to Walmart exactly. because Walmart donates to the poor. No. No. They're buying either on emotions, needs, or identity. I want a Camaro because it's a hot rod and I'll be identified as this. I need a truck because I need an SUV because I need this car because gas mileage is set the other, whatever, right? Yes, gas mileage is a feature, but what is that gas mileage going to do? It's going to save me time, it's going to save me money. It's gonna, like, that's the end game. So you always have to sell the end game, right? Mm-hmm. And Boom. like, uh, yeah, so I, since, like I said before, I was like, it's been a, I, I experimented with internet marketing and there's so much stuff out there. That's like, uh, you know, we can run your Facebook ad campaign. We can do all this stuff in, the oh, yeah. in, in regards to marketing. Well, for me as a business owner, it's like, what results can you provide? Right? So if I were to invest in like a marketing strategy, 
I could care less about a Facebook ad or a funnel, right? If you build me this funnel, you can do it. Like, I could care less. Are you going to double my sales, right? That, no, no, that's the result. That's the transformation that you're selling. And, you know, that's an example. Then you see these ads online, like what you were saying. Like, it, they sell the emotion of when you, when you go online and you see an ad where it's like, Five to ten thousand dollars, so you can travel the world and make money wherever you want, right? Yeah. They're selling you on that that lifestyle, like, and then they ask yep. you, you know, you know, wh- what would life look like if you could live that lifestyle, right? And, and I and I know I can relate because I was I was that sucker that fell for that, right? You know, <laughs> I saw one of those ads, I bought one of those courses, and I was like. And I booked a ticket, a one-way ticket to Thailand. And I was like, I'm going to just make it one If I could do it within a month, I'm going to try it. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of how I started. But, you know, that stuff works and it's extremely powerful. And um, the, the ability that I have, you know, you, you have to be, you know, it, it's like in the Spider-Man, with, with great power comes great responsibility because what this is really – going it's going into a deeper level of like psychology of you really understand why people buy and you understand the reasons why they buy so if you if you truly understand the processes and strategy behind this you can really persuade anyone to do anything yep nailed it absolutely man absolutely so so what, man? I, I really want to know because, like you said before, you know, you're 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 backpacking, you're traveling. I mean, we talked earlier in the year, and you were hanging out in California, and you know, now you're over here. So, you know, I'm curious, like, what has been for you? What has stood out as one of the best things that you've done for your transformation? Like during your transformative process, you know, you're learning the sales, you're doing these things, you're closing deals, you're crushing it. You know, like, and now you're in Vietnam. Like, what has been the best part so far? I, I think the best part for me is I'm starting to get more clarity on who I am and my vision. Because mm. I love talking. I love things like this. I'm, I'm talking and I'm connecting and engage, I'm engaging with people. But one of the biggest things I learned along the way was when I first started off, I was doing 10 to 12. I was like the, every business owner has gone through this. Every entrepreneur, they, w- they wear all hats of the business and they overwork themselves, right? I was working 10 to 12 hours oh, a day. Oh, yeah. You know, I was, I was like, I was living in Thailand, like, right? I, and I was, by, I was living in tro- on a tropical island, but I was still working a lot. And like, I, you know, that's something a lot of people don't know. Um, with like a digital nomad, digital nomads, they work a lot. They don't actually don't. You know, even though they may be living in different countries, they still work a lot, right? But instead of their, you know, when they go out to eat, instead of going, you know, down the road to some suburb into some uh, American chain restaurant, I went outside to the beach to like a, an island tropical restaurant, right? But the thing was for me is I was doing everything on my own, right? So then I, I realized the need for a team just to put people around me to then, you know, okay, if I were to close a deal, can I service them properly, right? Do I have the experts on my team to give them the proper service that they need? And then once I realized that um, I myself don't have a, the, the best product out there and I actually found in a competitor that had a better product than me, I was like, wow, this guy, um, this, this company called Gym Builder, I was doing fitness advertising right. for, for gyms. And I was charging like $2,500 up front um, for like a $1,000 retainer. And that was just like so much for the business owner at the time. And like for me, since my mindset wasn't right, I was targeting gym owners that didn't have money. So that, you know, of course, they're not going to buy. Well, this company called Gym Builder, they do six-week challenges where for like CrossFit gyms all over the world. And then they don't, you don't, the gym owner pays $0 up front and they only pay them on commission once the people sign up. So that was like a slam dunk sale because I was talking to so many people asking them for $2,500 and they're like, no way, dude, I can barely like, that's like all my money. Like I'm about to go out of business next couple of months if I don't make a change, but I just can't do that. But with this model, mm-hmm. it allowed them to get the, um, 
run a part, run a challenge, which each participant would pay 250 to get in, and then about 40 to 50 percent of those participants that signed up would then convert into um, long, um, full-time members, which was 100 percent profit for the gym owner. So when I came across this product, I was like, you know, this is awesome. I'm gonna kill it. So I partnered with this guy, and I became the number one affiliate for him, and I raised over. Um, I, I sold over $150,000 in revenue for the company. And this was mm. even cooler. Over 600 people signed up for these challenges and they there invested in their fitness and stuff like that. So for me, it's just like, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, you can, you can leverage, you can use this as leverage of finding people who are doing it and then just join up with them. And me having a passion for what they were doing was able to allow me to succeed and help them sell more, more, uh, challenges dude that's awesome dude wow so i don't think everything is just all like sunshine and rainbows there's always a downside so can you can you talk about you know like a tough moment or or something that wasn't so great just real quick you know kind of skim on like yeah this one thing happened or kind of lost whatever you know what i mean yeah that I mean, I, I won't, I won't get too deep into it, but there was this moment in, uh, in Thailand actually, when it was just me and my girlfriend. This was when I, uh, um, just, I, I just, I was kind of lost, man. I, I like, I, I needed to pay my bills and stuff like that. And I, uh, just, I, I just couldn't get, I was spinning my wheels, couldn't get anything going. And I remember one night we drove, um, to get something, something to eat and a motorbike is the main method of transportation out there. And I remember I went to turn the curb one time uh, and it was sandy and it was wet and um, it just slid right out. And we like basically, um, oh, wow. uh, yeah, it, it wasn't that bad because I wasn't going that fast, but my girlfriend, she was just like in the middle of the road and she's like, I need to go to the hospital. And I just remember at that moment, I was just like, you know, the first thing that came to my mind, I was like, you know, no, we can't go. Like, we don't have the money to do that, right? So the first, my first initial reaction was, no, let's not go, right? And when I, when I reflected on that, I was like, wow, holy shit. Like, I'm operating at a place where, you know, I'm valuing, I'm, I'm value, prioritizing money over the, the health of my girlfriend. And that was just right. because of the mindset and, the, and where I was at in my life at that time, right? And when I look back on it, that was such a pivotal point in my life. I was just like, I'm just happy to be alive, just happy to, you know, have 100% health. And I'm even out here that I made the decision to, you know, take a risk and live abroad and try to make this work. And you know what? It's been over a year since that, man. And I technically still haven't had a successful business. You know, but it, I've been abroad still, man. It's it's been over a year. Yeah. I've still found a way to make it work, and there you go. And, and and for me, that that was kind of a low point for me in my life was that moment. But um, it's just ever since then, it's just I've I've had a whole new perspective on life. And sometimes you need those moments to you know create yeah. a change. Absolutely, couldn't agree more, man. Yep. Those those transformational moments, man. It's like whatever we're going through is preparing us for where we're going to, you know. Because you so, had a transformational moment when you know it was uh, on Christmas Eve. Yep. Yeah, man. That was that that was the lowest moment of my life, you know. And it was either do I take my life or do I not? You know, you're faced with these decisions, you know. And and it, it everybody always wonders like, how did we get here? Like, how did we, and and you know what? I've been there, dude. Like, I've got a wife and kids and like, we've, we've been there, you know, like my daughter needed glasses. We're like, how the freaking crap are we going to pay for glasses? So it's like, well, we're going to have to wait. Like, we're just going to, like, we're going to have to, she can't get the glasses right now. We're going to have to wait, you know? And, but then we started thinking, I was like, well, let's prioritize it. Like you said, like, we need to prioritize this. Like, do we really need to eat out? I mean, there's like 50 bucks right there. Do we need clothes or do we need, you know, like, what do we, what can we cut out? Do we really need internet, you know, for a month? Do we really need, you know, so you start to like really prioritize things, man. And when you get that low to where you're having to sacrifice like a ton of stuff. um, Yeah, man, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Definitely. So 
So let, let's transition over to how can someone, uh, or, or better yet, like what was the resources you talked about? You talk about Dan and, and some of the things that, that, that you've, you know, taken, talk about those resources, you know, high ticket closer, king of, king of high ticket sales, Dan Locke, like, what is it about them? You know, how can, how can I go through it? I mean, how do I work with you or, or, you know, what are some of the resources that people can use to become a high ticket closer? Yeah. So there's this course and and we'll include the link, but it's a seven week Mm -hmm. course and it's, you can become a certified high ticket closer and Dan Locke, he's a multi-million dollar man, but he has a mentor you can look him up and you'll like him because he has a military background. His name is Daniel Pena. He's a $50 billion man. And Holy he, crap. He met, and Dan Locke, I think he pays about $100,000 to be a mentee of Daniel Pena. And Dan Locke's his number one, um, like his top student, um, just like top, like in terms of success. And Dan right. Pena, he lives in a castle. Like you can look this guy up. He's like he's he, he is just operates on a whole nother level. And wow, it, like so, what he, Dan teaches is what he learns from Dan Pena and Dan Lock. I, I made him my 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 full time and like my 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 uh, first ultimate mentor because I know that when I when I like get to when I hit my achieve my goals in a year, five or ten years. He's always right. he's he's gonna keep improving. He's he's one of those guys that he keep. I think he just dropped over Dan Locke did over like a hundred thousand just in this past month and just to reinvest into himself in terms of learning and education. Like he he is the man, and I I, I really you know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Dan Locke. So yeah, he has this course where he teaches you. You know, the first two weeks are like mindset. You know, what's the mindset to be a high ticket closer? Because that's so important. Then he teaches you the techniques of, okay, how can you close people on high ticket offers over the phone? And then the last two weeks are basically how do you form those business partners? So it's like you have this skill, how can you monetize it in the business world? And it's really like a seven week course. It's a, it's a live call. It, every, it's all live calls. It's awesome format. It's like a awesome. support, supportive community. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's his program. Perfect. Awesome. So where's, where are some resources? Like, do you have any, like, do you have a book that somebody would recommend? I mean, I, other than like, like the course, you know, but is there like mm-hmm. a book that maybe changed your life or some other things like a, like a software automation, something that says like, dude, you have to have this. Uh, yeah. <sighs> like, I'm honestly just so grateful for my MacBook. Like if I didn't have this computer, like this right. is like, this is all I need, man. This is all I go. need. Like when, when I travel, I make calls yep. from it. I, I mean, it, it, this is like, it's such a great resource. Uh, like, and I, and I even have a, I have a Samsung phone, but I'm all, I'm all for the Mac, the MacBooks. Um, so it's like Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, like everything he says, he's like, bro, pick up your phone that's a resource. This is what like the anchor app. You want to start a podcast, go to the anchor app, start talking. It automatically goes to iTunes. Boom. What do people do mm-hmm. when commercials come on? They pick up their phone. They they're on their phone. They're on Facebook. They're on LinkedIn. They're typing messages They're emailing They're whatever. Like this is like, this is the device. This is where people are hanging out. Everybody's like, well, how do I find, like, how do I find six figure business coaches? How do I find agency owners and, and two comma club members? You know, I'm a, you know, let, let's say that somebody pays me $200 a month to coach with me and four or $500 a month, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, how could I find a two comma club member? You know, they're on your phone. They're on, they're on social media. They're on YouTube. They're on LinkedIn. They're on podcasts. You know, they're on like you search for them, you know, and there's no excuse now. You, you type in something and, and the, the information is at your fingertips. There's no excuse anymore. Right? Mm-hmm. And I, I would also say another resource too, it's <clears throat> I, like, ju- th- I just became aware of this within probably like the last month is the power of um, 
I can only speak out of the power of LinkedIn and Instagram. And like, yeah, I use LinkedIn all the time. There's so many features on there that like, you, if you're not making money, you're not making business connections, you're doing something wrong because there, it, that yep. platform is so powerful. And same thing with Instagram. Like that, that, that platform is so powerful. It comes down to the mindset of like, oh, I've tried, you hear those people, I've tried Instagram, it doesn't work, or LinkedIn, it's, you know, it's just a waste of time. It's like, no, you, you know, people are making money off it. You're just not, you don't have the right mindset. You're not committed to making it work, right? Right, exactly. No, man, definitely nailed it. I tell people all the time, like, well, LinkedIn doesn't work. I don't know how LinkedIn doesn't work for you. I get booked to speak a lot on LinkedIn. I connect Mm -hmm. with a lot of people. And the people I connect with are people that I talk to. I talk to them regularly. I probably talk to more people on LinkedIn than I do on Facebook. You know, I've mm-hmm. got 1,100 or 1,200 people on LinkedIn, and I probably talk to like a, a majority of them, probably over half of them. You know, on Facebook, I've got almost 3,000 friends on Facebook. I, I might talk to a couple hundred of them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. LinkedIn, like nobody's doing duck lip selfies on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like nobody, exactly. nobody talked about the cheeseburgers at the restaurant that you went to last night. Nobody gives a crap. It's it's business. Yeah, that's we we went. I mean, that's how that's how we met was through LinkedIn. Yeah, that's how we met, dude. And look, you're on the show. So I mean, it's just you never know who you're gonna meet. You never know what one message, one phone call, like you never know what's gonna happen. So so let's talk about that, man. Let's talk about that for a second. Where are you headed now, man? What's the rest of your 2018 look like? Yeah, so, like, I'm dialed in and focused on becoming a six-figure earner by 2018. Or by, yeah, uh, October 8th, there's this event. It's a Dan Locks event. It's called Closers and Practice event in Vancouver, Canada. And he has an award of HTC High Ticket Closer of the Year Award. That's my yeah. goal. I see it on my vision board every single day. By then, Boom. I'll... And be a six 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 figures. So you want to earn six figures by October eighth of twenty eighteen this year. That's the plan. Sit, earn sit, earn that award by that time. I don't, earn I don't know award. how much okay. money okay. that. I don't know how much yeah. money, but be on pace by and there's this this date February first. Earn hundred k. Profit there you go. in my bank, February 1st. Earn a profit. Dude, you're going to do it, man. You're going to crush it. I know, man. I know you are. It's so it, – it, it, now I'm focused. I know what I want now, right? Yep. And this was something I needed, right? And there, I, I was the guy that had the shiny eyes. I needed this focus, oh. this, uh, you know, <laughs> this uh, alignment, you know, military discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know how that is, man. Definitely. I always tell people like, yeah, I've got um, ADOS, which is attention deficit. Oh, squirrel. Like I got the shiny object syndrome super bad sometimes, man. Um, Yeah, it's not good. (laughs) So how do you combat that? What are some strategies that you combat that bright, shiny object syndrome? Well, dude, and, and, and this is some stuff Dan Locke has taught me as well. It, Magic syndrome, you don't believe that your primary option is going to work out, right? Okay. So if I'm a high-ticket closer and then I see an ad on e-commerce that says to earn six figures when my goal is to earn six figures, and then I start just get a shiny object syndrome and jump into that, I'm basically telling myself that I won't be able to get there if I just remain a high-ticket closer. Okay. And yeah. So it's really that belief. It's just like, do you, and it's like, can you, can you double down? Like what can you improve on right now to, you know, help like improve that? And this is the mindset that you need to have. If you want to, you know, really focus in on one thing, it says, uh, you know, like for you, you want to be a TEDx speaker, right? And yep. you weren't going to stop applying until you got there. Right. Exactly. You could have all these other, you know, all these other opportunities could open up, but you wanted to be a TEDx speaker, so you kept applying, kept doing whatever it took to get there. So. Yep. 
to combat the shiny object syndrome, you know, it's always going to, that urgency and that it, it never goes away, right? You know, there's always going to be some things that might pique your interest, but, but if you have your goals and you're so focused and you, you write them down every day and you know exactly what you want, it's like, does this help me get there? And if the answer is no, then I'm just making a decision and I'm just keep forging a way of staying on the high ticket closer path and I don't have tunnel vision. Right. Yep, exactly. I love it, man. So as we close the show, this is the moment where we do a shameless plug. You can plug friends, quotes, websites, um, Facebook, whatever. This is your time to shine. Shameless plug moment. Go. Tally, you there? These are, is this for, for me or the fans? This is you. This in? is you. Shameless plug. This is you, man. Shameless plug. You can plug friends, quotes, websites, Facebook, whatever you want. Shameless plug moment. Go. So definitely check out that link for um, Dan Locke's certificate um, program. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll include that link below. Um, shameless plug. This is a good one. You put me on the spot. Um, I think <clears throat> one of the quotes that I really like is, you know, by Wayne Dyer. It's when you mm-hmm. change the way you look at it. It's a, uh, help me out here, man. Uh, it's like a, the way you, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah, th- that is uh, so powerful for me, man. It's like um, just with like LinkedIn, you know, I, I didn't look at LinkedIn the way I do. I look at it now. It's like, wow, this is such a powerful tool. Um, yep. You know, uh, with you, when you look, when you looked at your life at one point, you're like, it, 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 you didn't, you didn't see any value in it, but now you see so much value and it. it's just you changing that mindset, you changing the way you look at it. It means to have a whole new meaning, right? Me looking at myself and having a different identity that allowed me to operate at a higher level. Um, and then Instagram, oh, I, I would say um, go Cavaliers, uh, LeBron. I'm a big <laughs> NBA fan. So I also wanted to give a shout out to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, all right. But uh, that's all I got, man. For there that. you go, man. Sounds great. Sounds great. So as we close, can you deliver your, your uh, best nugget of knowledge? that will motivate, transcend, and inspire someone to take action today? Find a mentor. That's my number one, dude. Find a mentor. Everyone's like, what's the number one? Shut up, find a mentor. Because <laughs> they'll, tell you, they'll tell you what to do. I can't, I can't tell you what to do. You can't tell what to do. Like, like I don't, without knowing what your goals are and everything, like, you got to get a mentor. Number one, what I mean by that, successful, you find mentors. And what I mean by find a mentor, like, you know, people will say you, you have a mentor at your, your, your current location, current job, or, you know, you could look at a, an internet, like, they're your mentor. What I really mean by being a mentor is that you invest, whether it's time, money, or resources into them, whether you buy the, one of their courses and they have actually have one of, you actually have communication and interaction with them, or you know, you just say, tag them and say, you know, you'll work for them for free. Whatever the case may be. Yep. I've seen people do that, that too. relationship where they tell, you know, they teach you where, you know, because they've been where you're trying to go and where you land. That, that's another thing. They have to have the same passion, vision statement as you. And they, they have to have done the things that you are trying to do. If that's the case. Focus on that one person and just follow everything that they do. You know, get in whatever course they have. Try to be, you know, when it, try to find out if they're going to a live event. Follow them. Just connect with them. Have them show you guidance and just listen to their 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 their, their philosophies, their strategies. Because this is what they're using and they're so successful. So if you're just, you know, copy a fraction of that, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna do you're gonna do pretty well. Boom. Nailed it, dude. 
Brother, I want to thank you for coming on the show, being a part of Life Transformation Radio, telling us your story. A uh, lot of value today, man. Uh, how to close high ticket offers, what that looks like, the mindset that's needed. So, dude, thank you so much for coming on the show. All right. So, Life Transformation Radio listeners, another amazing show, another impactful guest. If anything resonated with you, find a way to get in touch with Tyler. Go to LinkedIn. Instagram, Facebook, all the links are right there. Connect with him. He is going to help you scale your business. He's going to help you get where you need to go, living that dream life. So as I close the show, I always say, live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out those values that you have deep in your heart. I call it living your brand. So until next episode, have a great night. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions.